This Wednesday morning, thank you so much for joining us this morning. In this segment, we focus on the internationally renowned TEDx, which brings together innovative innovators from around the world, speaking to ordinary people like you and I about the, uh, what innovation is like, uh, what people are doing in technology, the environment, etc. There's a local uh, chapter, I will call it, uh, taking place on the 30th of November at the Central Bank Auditorium. Our guests are Giselle... Uh, Carter. Just a car. <laughs> car, sorry. Uh, who is the head of brand uh, management strategy and planning at Inglefield, Oglefield and Martha, and our Vinda Rampersad, social media team member. Good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. We spoke about TEDx. Just let's go over TEDx for people who may not be uh, as into TEDx as, as some of us sure. uh, tech junkies and, sure. and innovative people. Yeah. Sure. Well, t uh, TED stands for Technology, Entertainment and Design. Mm -hmm. um, originally, it was an event that was in the US, and it was fairly exclusive. But the whole premise was that they wanted to share these ideas that were worth spreading, mm -hmm. um, which is a little bit counterintuitive if you have a, a, a sort of exclusive mm -hmm. event. So um, the first step that they made was to actually put those talks online mm -hmm. so that they were free to the world. Yeah. And then the following for that grew to the point that they wanted to have independently uh, run um, uh, TED-like conferences all around the world. All around the world. Mm -hmm. I think there's several hundred of them now. Yeah. So TEDx Porto Spain is the one that we work on here in China. Do, do they all happen at the same time around the world? No, I think it's all throughout the all year. All throughout the year, now, Arvinda? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, there's so much now that on any day in the year, you can have events happening around the world, one or two events happening around the world. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's grown into this international brand. How important uh, is the evolution of social media mm -hmm. uh, in carrying the, t the TEDx brand to really ordinary citizens on smartphones, on iPads, and televisions, etc. Well, Twitter, but yeah. The beauty of um, TED is that it was an exclusive event and then they opened it up by putting the videos online. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the way that they've been spreading those videos since then is through media mediums like media like Facebook, Twitter, those sorts of things, and TEDx. TEDx is largely a voluntary um, operation and I mean the reach you get through social media and the engagement you get, you get to actually have conversations on social media around these talks and around these topics. It's a really powerful thing. But while it starts off voluntary, yeah. vol in a voluntary manner, there are some companies who have benefited tremendously. Just look at uh, Twitter that's gone public recently yeah. mm -hmm. that really got a great footing at one of the TEDx outlets in, in Palo Alto in Los Angeles. Mm. And look where Twitter is now. Mm. Is this also a forum for young inventors, uh, social media pioneers to, to talk about their experiences, their challenges and their accomplishments? Yes, definitely. I mean, I mean, the incredible thing about TED and, and TED Talks is that a person who is sitting in the audience might be just as accomplished as the person who is on stage, mm -hmm. for one. So it's a very equalizing thing. But also, you might find yourself watching a TED Talk and being so empowered by what is being said mm -hmm. that you yourself are supposed to be able to leave and go out into your job or your own life and take those, those same lessons that that person mm -hmm. would have been sharing and, and do the same thing, you know? Let's talk about the more social media involvement. How is social media going to be inter integrated into Trinidad and Tobago's uh, event on the 30th of, of November? So, on the, at the event, well, in the lead up to the event, we've been promoting heavily on Facebook and Twitter, and uh, we've been using Instagram. That's a new one to um, give a sort of a behind the scenes look at, at the planning process. Um, on the day itself, we'll be giving updates um, on speakers, on different conversations that are happening within the audience. We'll use it to pull people in who may not be able to be there physically to sort of take that conversation from within the room and extend it across the internet to wherever mm -hmm. you may be entering and entering. Just who are our presenters this year? Charlotte Elias and Keita Deming. Yeah. Charlotte Elias and yes. Keita Deming. Yes. Let's, let's go through Charlotte's profile. Oh, sure. Um, well, Charlotte has been on the organizing committee long before me, mm -hmm. so i am only been on board for about two years. But Charlotte is about a million different things. She's an activist. She runs a non-profit as well that empowers artists mm -hmm. who are working to do social enterprise in different countries. Um, and I think Kita's bio is a little more complicated, but Kita mm -hmm. is currently in Canada, but he has been the TEDx license holder for the past few years. Mm -hmm. And he kind of describes himself as a change monger. Um, type of person because he basically is seeking to um, facilitate positive change. Mm -hmm. when, when you have the, the forum, it, what's the intention? Is the intention to, to inspire young people in technology, entertainment, 
uh, uh, and social media uh, innovation is that the basic or, or to make be uh, an agent of change in whatever sphere you, you 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 are yes I think it is definitely the latter to be an agent of change in, in whatever sphere mm -hmm. because ultimately yes it's an, an empowering and inspiring tool you know in a sense for young people but it's really also something that bridges the gap between generations because you'd find a lot of our speakers are older mm -hmm. a lot of our audience is also older so it's really something that generates a conversation between those different generations as well. In addition, Arvind, to mm -hmm. going from a closed circuit to an open circuit in terms of involvement and access, what, how has Telex changed over the years, in your opinion? Um, I think it's become a lot more inclusive and it's sort of widened to include a range of topics. So it started off as like, technology, entertainment, design. Mm -hmm. Now you can go and look at, at talks on environment environment on social activism on, on anything you can think of you can find a talk out there there's so mm -hmm. many talks out there and so many presenters when you have these kinds of forums, sometimes it gets political is that allowed i suppose <laughs> but that really was non-partisan yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the, the non-partisan but still very often when you have these types of influential people change agents sure. it can sometimes they seep into the political arena. Is sure. that preferred or is that no, you look, you're trying to stay not. away from that? Definitely not. We should try to stay yeah, away enough from of that. that. On, yeah. the, on the airwaves. I think yeah. so, yeah. It's yeah. about a deeper message. If, if someone wants to, to be in the auditorium or, or get a feed, how can they do so? Oh, well, they would. So we have um, tickets available through our website. Um, we're about two or three weeks out right now, so reservations have been booked up. Um, but people can join the waiting list, and um, as so, so the hall is filled already, basically. The hall is the tickets are reserved. Not mm -hmm. everyone has paid, but mm -hmm. tickets are, are reserved. So as if wasn't there line for paying out, for your tickets? So someone can uh, know to go and capitalize on someone defaulting. <laughs> right now it's November fifteenth, mm -hmm. and after that we'll look at um, who's paid, who's not. We'll get in touch, see if they do plan to come, and um, as people drop out, if they do drop out, we'll be pulling from the waiting list. So and uh, from uh, mm -hmm. social. media media and other access points of access uh, is there a website that is going to be streaming proceedings uh, we don't have a live stream this year um, the logistics didn't allow it but all the talks are going to be recorded they'll be put up on YouTube and we'll be sharing them online as they come on mm -hmm. are there particular points of focus of the two speakers this year um, or, yeah, or you so. just let them it's a pretty diverse range, yeah. Some of them are going to be speaking about uh, gender issues. You've got a, a wide array of people. You've got people speaking about music as well. Mm -hmm. I think we were both talking about our sort of favorites and the people that we're looking forward to Who are your favorites? Who are you looking forward to most? Um, the Boar Men. Yeah. <laughs> or the Stick Fighting stick guy. Mm -hmm. guys. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's going to be two of them. So yeah. that will be um, Keegan, Keegan, Keegan and Taylor. And Rondell mm -hmm. Benjamin. Rondell Benjamin, yeah. yeah. Uh, so. And, and what are, what, how, how diverse do the contributors rule from what Stick Fighting is pretty diverse? Oh, sure. uh, you have someone from entertainment? Yes, we have two musicians. We've got um, Dominique and we've also For got sure. ATN, yeah. Charles. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then we've got someone who is working in permaculture as well, Earl mm. Noronha. Uh, Rama uh, Marana, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. What, what time is it running from on the 30th? I believe it's 9 a.m. 9 a.m. Yes. All through the day? Yes. yes. Wow. So, and, so it's, and people just coming up and talking. Are there Q&A sections, uh, se segments, so people can interact with the speakers? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. There's coffee breaks mm -hmm. and, there's, and we, you know, we encourage that, actually. We mm -hmm. encourage everyone to be able to speak with, this, to the, with the speakers themselves, but with each other. Mm -hmm. It's really a day for connecting, which is yeah. our theme this year. And, and what mechanism do you have in place to follow what sorts of influence or impact it's having, if any? Oh, I guess that would be more social media, if anything yeah, else. It would be, yeah, we'd be looking at um, what interesting topics came up on the day. We'll be trying to... Um, social media acts as a record, because mm -hmm. when people interact with you, you can see what conversations happen, and you can pull out like pertinent things and use that. I've record. looked at uh, two of the TEDx fora in North America, and, and at one point, they linked to a simultaneous forum in another jurisdiction is that part of your plan down the road oh. where you have someone on a big screen coming from los angeles and someone from trinidad going to new york that would be amazing <laughs> yeah if we could do that <laughs> for sure we're, we're hoping to get there <laughs> yeah. yes. all right uh, tedx uh 2013 trinidad and tobago takes place on the 30th of november uh, you can also go to the website which is tedxportofspain.com tedxportofspain.com or check facebook yes. all right giselle and our thanks for being with us thanks so much we That's are good. going to take a short break and come back with more stay with us